But for many, America's stand in Korea was a turning point in the world's struggle against communism. The United Nations Charter had withstood its first test. An aggressor nation had been rebuffed, and the borders of an aggrieved democracy restored. Proper restraint had prevented the conflict from deteriorating into a global nuclear war. When it finally ended, with 35,000 Americans dead and over 100,000 wounded, this war without victory was quickly forgotten. Remembered or not, it was a conflict that saw three nations join together for the first time to repel aggression. And it saw the beginning of a buildup of American arms, one that forged a military capability that remains a whole The West calls the Korean War the Forgotten War, but forgotten by who, right? Koreans haven't forgotten about it. U.S. estimates say that we killed at least 20% of the population, and that's underselling it. Three years of nonstop bombing, mass executions, rumors of bioweapons. Korea is still split down the middle because of a line hastily drawn by U.S. bureaucrats. And for our part, we haven't forgotten about it either. There are constant stories about North Korea. The news constantly fear mongers about Korean attacks on the U.S. mainland. Because there's no electricity and sometimes people have to push the train. They have to push the train. Yeah. I'm not that gullible. I can Google how much a train weighs. All these stories come from anonymous sources reported by Radio Free Asia. <laughs> An outlet literally founded by the CIA. Even prior and during the war, reporting was always this bad on Korea. During the war, the New York Times reported that the Koreans were little better than barbarians, the hordes of Genghis Khan. So, why are we talking about a war if we supposedly, you know, forgot about it? Korea was one country until two U.S. officers drew a line on a map, right? Korea had a government, and the United States came in, and we replaced it with the U.S. military-backed one. In 1948, in the South, they held elections. Those elections were deemed free and fair by the UN, despite the fact they only certified 2% of the polls. So the newly elected president, Sigmund Rhee, well, the first thing he did was make being a communist illegal, punishable by death. Sigmund Rhee declared communists were the enemy of all humanity. A rebellion on Jeju Island was put down brutally, with 30,000 civilians killed. Before the war, a minimum of 100,000 people were killed on suspicion of being a communist. Once the war began, the killings went into high gear. 
communists were arrested and sent to the Bodo League for re-education, where they were dragged to nearby valleys to be shot. Deaths from the Bodo League executions alone are 100 to 200,000, with some scholars going as high as a million. <laughs> Conservative estimates for civilians killed before the war on mere suspicion of being a communist is at 200,000 in the years between 1946 and 1950. This blood-soaked crusade is the truth of the founding of the Republic of Korea and their democracy. When the U.S. State Department says that the United States and the Republic of Korea share values, is this what they are referring to? Even after Sigmund Rhee was deposed, the U.S. backed another dictator, Park Chung-hee. The Republic of Korea didn't have actual elections until 1987. The three years of the war were nothing but relentless bombing. The United States dropped more bombs and napalm on Korea than they used in the entirety of the Pacific Front of World War II. We even considered glassing the peninsula with nukes. By the end of the war, Pyongyang was nothing but rubble. By the way, that 20% dead figure I gave you, that was from U.S. General Curtis Bombs Away LeMay, the head of U.S. Strategic Air Command. That was his quote. That was his estimate. The U.S. is mad about this. We wanted all of Korea. We wanted the whole thing, and we did not get it. Oh, why did we want Korea? Well, to keep the communists out and to provide labor for the Japanese, the same people who had colonized Korea. But now, they were our friends. The truth is the Korean War never officially ended. The U.S. just wants to pretend it did, pretend that it won the war, and forget everything else up to that point. It wants us to believe that North Korea is just being weird for no reason. <laughs>